This year, a coalition of organi organizations led by the White House Initiative on Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders have launched a campaign to collect more specific data on Pacific Islander populations. We have a guest to talk to us today about that. He is Robert T. Terrancini. He is a NYU associate professor of higher education and principal investigator for CARE, the National Com Commission on Asian American and Pacific Islander Research in Education. So thank you so much for being here, Robert. We thank do appreciate it. Uh, <clears throat> this is such an interesting thing. Tell me about why the gap uh, in data exists when it comes to Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. Well, it's rooted in the issue around um, what the demography of the AAPI population is. Um, we want to point out that they're a heterogeneous population. Uh, they're comprised of many different ethnic groups. They have different immigration histories. They speak different languages. Uh, they have different experiences when it comes to education and uh, what, what their experiences and outcomes are when it comes to uh, educational mobility. And so what we want is for uh, institutions to be able to have better information, more accurate information that reflects the uh, uh, the heterogeneity in the population. And so how much detail do you, you want them to go into? Yeah, I think that'll vary depending on uh, the geographic region, the specific institution, and the, the communities that they're serving. So an example is in Hawaii, they're uh, collecting really good data on their native Hawaiian population and the Pacific Islander population. And they're doing that because they want to be able to target resources and policies and programs that can respond to the needs of those students. Tell me what the role, uh, what role does the, this misrepresentation play, particularly as it re relates to education? Yeah, so this is a big problem for the API population because uh, there's this dominant perception, uh, kind of a narrative that's out there that APIs are all high achieving students, uh, they're all going to the best colleges and they're not facing any kind of educational challenges. And you know what's happening is that uh, it overlooks uh, some of the challenges that, that some subgroups are facing, and uh, you know it overlooks the fact that the largest concentration of AEPI enrollment in higher education is in community colleges, for example. And so we want to bring attention to that, so uh, policies can be better tailored to reach those students, uh, practices can be modified and improved to. Uh, to kind of serve this, this fast-growing population in the U.S. Go a little bit deeper into what some of those other challenges are. are. Yeah, so there's challenges related to, say, uh, you know, you have refugees, um, large concentrations of refugee populations among Southeast Asians. And it's understanding what are their needs, what are their challenges, and how an education system can better respond to that. And this is particularly an issue in communities where you have high concentrations of those populations. And how can policy changes then help? So the policies we're concerned about are, first of all, just how we're tracking information about these students. Right now we treat them as one uh, homogeneous population, as a single racial category. And what happens is it, it, it paints this uh, inaccurate statistical portrait about the population. You know, and there certainly is, speaking of, of that, there certainly is a psychological consequence to not truly being seen. Absolutely. Can you talk a little bit about that, even in your own experience growing up? Yeah, well, so I'm a fourth generation Japanese American. And, uh, you know, once a week, every other week, I get in a cab, I'm walking down the street, folks are asking, where are you from? You speak English very well. You know, there's this idea that Asians are this all kind of new foreign immigrants and, you know, we're all the same. And so my story is very different than the story of a Pacific Islander, is, and that's different from a story of a Southeast Asian. And uh, we want folks to understand that that's a part of who we are, and we want that to be reflected in, in how we approach the population when it comes to education, policy, and practice. We really do have that tendency here in, in America to like to sort of just lump people into Absolutely. boxes. Tell me about the iCount campaign and what you hope to achieve. Yeah, so iCount is a data quality movement uh, that we've been working on with uh, ETS and the White House Initiative on AAPIs. And it's exciting because it's an effort for us to bring attention to the need for better data. You know, we're at this time when uh, data is, is more of a factor than ever in how we make decisions in our education system. And so we say, well, we need better data to reflect the changing demography of the nation. Um, so one part of it is just raising awareness. Um, and then the other aspect of it is, let's find models of success 
So institutions, systems, and states that are disaggregating data, and then let's model that for other places that want to move in that direction. All right. Robert Taranishi, thank you very much for thank coming you. bringing awareness to this important issue. Appreciate it. Thank you.